Hi, Linda Sessions here. Can you believe it is week five in computer applications? Last week we started in Word and you had three projects and a quiz that should have already been completed and turned in. This week you have an additional three projects and another quiz over Word tips. Pay attention in your course syllabus or in your uh, LMS for the class that you have the correct due date um, might be different than the due date you see here so make sure that you check the due date for your assignments that are due this week so that you are not late. Going into the week 5 module see we have the checklist a link to the YouTube videos right here and then you have the reading for these word tips. Now the reading this is 11 pages long a lot of information here for you, uh, translating text, uh, how to create a table of contents in Word, working with columns. You'll be using a lot of these skills this week, as well as you will find the answers to the quiz question in this reading. So make sure you take a few minutes and read through these 11 pages of text. The first assignment that I'm going to look at here for this video is the Combat Cybercrime Con uh, Project. So you have a starter file and an instruction file. Now all of the assignments this week are manually graded by your instructor. So make sure when you submit the document, it is the document that you want graded. Also. The preview pane in Blackboard does not show the exact document that you've turned in. It is not as robust as the Microsoft Word program itself. So that preview pane is going to mess up your pictures. It might mess up your lining, uh, your formatting. Don't worry about that. When your instructor goes in and grades the assignment, they download the file that you submitted. You can go in, you can check and make sure uh, the file that you uh, submitted, you can download it yourself, but that's what your instructor is going to do. They're not going to grade from that preview pane. Now on the Combat Cybercrime, this is what your starter file is going to look like. So the first thing you're, you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you're going to save this with your name, last name, uh, and then you are going to be making some changes to this. You're going to be formatting it, um, adding a subtitle, formatting that subtitle, and then you're going to be making these this text from our daily life all the way over to here, and you're going to make it into three columns. So right here are the instructions for the combat cybercrime. Um, Make sure you read through each step before you attempt it. A lot of times in these steps, it's going to tell you exactly where you need to go. Like here three, you're going to create a title using a preset heading style centered on the top of your document. Um, to do that to the styles, you can click on the home ribbon and then click the styles icon on the far right and pick the style that you want. Um, you're going to create a subtitle with the subtitle style and the subtitle is the line beneath your title and then um, you're going to do some shading the paragraph shading not highlighting think back to the first week that we were working in word when you shaded the paragraph there and then on number six it says do not create your column formatting until have you completed your title and subtitle so it's very important to make sure you do those first steps first. Then, to format for columns, place cursor where columns should begin. This is where I have students sometimes have difficulties because they just do a select all and create columns. When you do that, it's also going to put your title and your subtitle in your columns. So you don't want to do that. You want to go into your document here you know, here's your title. You're going to format that with the style. Um, you're going to add a subtitle 
And then right here in front of our daily life is where you're going to put your insertion point before you start your columns. So make sure. I guess you could put it here too. This is our column heading. Um, but that's where you want to put your insertion point. Then you're going to come up here and uh, lay out the columns. Going to come down to more columns. You're going to choose three. You want the line between. You want the spacing to stay the same. But this is the real important part right here. Right now, it's applying to the whole document. You don't want that. You, you want to make sure your title and your subtitle is not part of a column. So we're going to open this menu box and choose this point forward and then say OK. And now you can see we have our columns here, our titles up here. If we'd already entered our subtitle, it would also be there. So uh, make sure that your insertion point is located where you want it to be, where you want the columns to start. Okay. So you're going to do some other formatting in the column other than that, bolding some text, uh, making some text into a bullet point. And when you're finished, this is what your final combat cybercrime paper will look like. Big difference, isn't it? Which would you rather read? This article? Or this one? And it's just all done with the, the settings and the options that you have in Word. So that is the Combat Cyber Prime project. The next one is the Word Event Flyer. You'll notice that this one does not have a starter file. You are just going to open up a blank Word document and then create your event flyer. So let's look at the instructions for that. So here the instructions are going to be in a PDF format. And you can see, um, as I stated, you're going to open up your Word and create a new document. You're going to save it with your last name, Event Flyer. So mine would be named Sessions Event Flyer. Um, I'm going to go to the File, Page Setup, and make sure your margins are set to one inch on all sides. It's usually the default setting, but go in and check and make sure. Now you can either create your flyer in the landscape or portrait orientation, whichever you prefer. Now you're going to be creating a one page flyer on an event that you are, excuse me, an event that you are hosting. And it can be a birthday party, a Halloween party, it could be a watch party for a basketball game, any type of party. It can be an event where you're going to give people information um, like maybe you, maybe you're into uh, cars and you want to do an event where you're showing people how to change the oil in their car. Whatever you want, it's your event. And so you're going to need for that event, you're going to have to have a name for it. You're going to have to have a little bit of information about what the event is, why you're having the event some bullet points on what people can expect to either do at your event or learn from your event. Um, you're going to have to add um, a subtitle. You need a time, a date, and a location so people know where to go and when. Set a bullet list in there. At, at least two graphic images to help illustrate your flyer. I want at least one ship, shape sorry, with either filled with color or with text in your flyer and a page border. And then any additional design elements or text that you would like to add to make your, the appearance of your flyer look better. 
have. As long as you have these basics, you're fine. But if you want to add, that is fine as well. Make sure you proofread your document for spelling, grammar, and accuracy. All right. Now, the assignment, the project instructions show this Halloween festival flyer. So let me bring this one up over here. Please do not just look at this flyer and say, oh, that looks good. I'm just going to do one just like this. Um, make it your own flyer. Okay, if you want to do a Halloween party, that's fine, but put your own text and format it your own way. So here you can see I have my title up here, my Halloween festival. I've got um, subtitle for it, Get Ready for a Spooky Night of Fun and Frights. Um, that's my when I, you're asked when you're asked to do the um, subtitle, that's my subtitle. Okay. I also have my time, date, and location. Mine are up here at the top. Yours might be at the bottom. Okay. I have my information about my Halloween party right here. I've got my bullet list telling people, hey, this is what we're going to be doing. Now you don't have to have that many. I mean, have at least three or four. And then down at the bottom, I have my paragraph, and I've shaded it. I've changed the font to make it a little more spooky. I've added a picture of a haunted house and put it on my page. I've got, I've added an icon of a ghost as my other graphic. And then this little half moon shape with yellow is my shape piece. And I also have my border. So take the skills that you've learned so far from the first week, from that collage poster, from working on that combat cybercrime, and now I want you to create an event flyer for your event. Don't overthink this. It can be as simple as a Thanksgiving party at your house, um, Halloween party, maybe you want to do um, some type of family reunion, okay? Just make it yours. So that's the event flyer. Now, the last one project for this week is the creating a cookbook. So you, you will be creating a family cookbook, and you will also be creating a table of content using your word skills. I added this assignment in here because I want you to see how easy it is to do a table of contents in Microsoft Office. And I chose a cookbook because everybody has recipes that they make in their family. Now, it could be that your recipe is calling up a restaurant and ordering something, um, but for the most part, we usually have some recipes that we have in our family, right? So let's look at the instructions here. Um, you're going to create a cookbook. You're going to open up uh, the recipes data file, and I'll show you that in just a second. And then you're going to be changing the theme and some document formatting, um, using the Heading 1 style and the Heading 2 style. Make sure you pay attention to those styles when you're working on this project, because that will make a difference when you get into, when you get into your creating the table of contents. So just follow these instructions step by step. You're going to be formatting some recipes that are already in there for you. Um, you're going to be adding a cover page, um, replacing the document title with uh, your last name cookbook. So again, mine would be sessions, the Sessions Cookbook. Um, you're going to replace the subtitle with the number of generations you'd like the cookbook to represent. Now, some people have five generations of recipes in their family, and they want to add those many recipes. Um, how many res How many generations is your cookbook going to be representing? Then, at the bottom of the title page, you are actually going to be creating a table of contents page that's going to be looking like this. And what's really cool is when you have a table of contents in Word, 
when you go in and you click on that, it's going to take you right to that page. It's real easy to do, guys. After you get all that set up, you're actually going to go back in and add two more chapter headings and four more recipes. Now, you will need some pictures for the recipes. Um, and then when you're all finished, you're going to have 11 pages in your project, and they will be similar to these. See, we have uh, pictures, we have recipes, we have the ingredients, and we have the instructions. Okay. And you can also put, if you want, just information about the recipe. Like my family, we had this Waldorf salad that my grandmother always made, but nobody ever ate it. We didn't like it, but she always made it every year. And we still kept making it every year, even though nobody liked it in memory of grandma. So doesn't make any sense, but that's what we did. So you're going to be starting off with the, um, go up here, with the um, recipes data file. Let me find that over here. This is the the recipe data file you will be starting with, and you will be making changes to this. Um, there will be a video up in YouTube covering this assignment, a lot of it, a lot of what you will be doing is taking the skills that you've already learned and you're going to be applying them in a new way. So you're going to take this main dish, you're going to be, I think that's going to be heading one, then like the chicken pot pie would be heading two. You're going to be adding a picture. You're going to be doing manual page breaks. We did that last week. So each recipe is on its own page. Then you're going to be coming up to the uh, layout tab. And, um, nope, the insert, yeah, the insert tab, sorry. I get those two mixed up sometimes. And you're going to be adding a cover page. Um, make sure you've changed the design the theme and uh, stuff before you go that far, but just follow the instructions as they're laid out in the assignment. Then your final cookbook is going to look like something like this. You're going to have a title page. Let's do one page at a time. You're going to have a title page where you're going to put, um, like here's session cookbooks. I'm going to cover four generations, my family recipes, uh, your name and CED 115. Then you're going to have a table of contents. And again, I can come here and if I want to just go right to the banana nut bread, I can just control click. And it's going to take me right to that place in my cookbook. Oh, hit the wrong button. So when I hit that control and then clicked on my mouse, it took me right back to that pumpkin bread muffin recipe. Here's all the recipes that I have. So um, if I want to go to the dessert, I want the air fryer grilled peaches. I can just hold down my control key, I click with my mouse, and it takes me right to that recipe. So you can see how the table of contents, if you've got a lot of recipes in your family send somebody the PDF on the cookbook and then they can rotate around in their cookbook very easily in the instructions in blackboard here I tell you you know download the assignment instructions um, you will start out with recipes from main dishes and breads but you will need an additional four recipes and an additional two more categories or headings to complete this assignment. So we've got main dishes and breads. So maybe you want to have desserts in your cookbook. Maybe you want to have appetizers in your cookbook. Um, or maybe you want to have casseroles as one of your 
categories. That is up to you. But you're going to be adding some more information to this. So this assignment right here probably will take you a little longer to complete than the other two, but I uh, hopefully it's something that uh, you will be able to use as well. Uh, maybe you'll enjoy it and actually go back and make your own family cookbook with your recipes to pass along to your kids or to give to somebody as a gift. So this week, um, you've got your word tips, the reading here, the combat cybercrime, the event flyer, creating a cookbook, and a quiz over word tips. As always, if you need me or need your instructor, make sure you send them an email and uh, just reach out to them, ask them if they have questions. Also, make sure you check your grades. We are, as I said, in the fifth week, we're getting close to the drop date. That's the last day you can drop the class and get a withdrawal on your transcript instead of an F. Uh, before you withdraw from the class, make sure you visit with the instructor and your advisors to make sure it's not going to affect your financial aid in any way. Um, but go in, be proactive, and check your grades and look to see what your grade is. And if you have questions, reach out to your instructor. Have fun this week, finishing up in Word. Next week, we're going to be looking at PowerPoint. Have a good week.